I think it's important that all centers are using a standardized protocol because in that way we can use um, uh, information that, like I, like I told you earlier, it, it combines this different uh, information that gives access to different tissue characteristics. And if we're all using the same um, parameters, we can actually exchange information and we're all uh, talking the same language. And I think with these different sequences, it's very, very good to develop not only research, but in clinical practice, we're all talking and using the same parameters. And, and that for me is very important in this area. It has been done previously on um, Alzheimer's disease, for instance, or multiple sclerosis, where a lot of um, MR parameters have been developed so that you can use that uh, when you're dealing in, in clinical practice uh, around the world and we're all using the same. And I think it's also very important in clinical trials and if you're um, in including uh, patients for research that we're all using the same. So I think it's, it's a very in, in interesting effort to actually develop this uh, standardized protocols when you're looking at, at this. But also in clinical practice, I think we need to, to go beyond just simple MR. And uh, I think uh, when you're using this protocol, it will develop the field. And it doesn't matter what kind of hospital you're at, you'll get a very good um, image uh, information if you go through all of this. So actually pushing forward this um, standardized protocol, I think it will improve how you will address patients in, in terms of imaging. And I think that's very, very interesting. Uh, the protocol that we have um, um, recommended, uh, it's based on availability of sequences. I think it's important that you, you, you do need a three Tesla because we think neuromelanin is an important sequence and you need that to actually make this kind of imaging. Uh, but everything else is just um, regular sequences and uh, you need a structural, very good uh, T1 to, to measure the brain stem. Then, uh, like I said, neuromelanin is important, but also SWI to actually look at the nigra one. And um, if you are going to do um, diffusion, uh, maybe just with a simple more minutes, you can actually do diffusion tensor imaging and that will give you more information. And you can you also use that to... Um, and get free water. Uh, so it's just post-processing. And additionally, to look at iron, uh, we recommend that uh, you do some sort of quantitative imaging uh, that, again, it, it will increase the kind of information that you get from your patients, and it, it will help you further in research. So we use uh, our R2-star uh, relaxometry. Um, and with that, you can really uh, get more information from the data that you're acquiring. And then we always do some sort of imaging to actually look at the, the, the white matter. Uh, we recommend a 3D flare uh, because in a simple sequence, it will give you a lot of information in terms of the white matter. So combining all of this um, in a very structured way, uh, you will be able to, to give more information to your patient and uh, be able to study these diseases. And I think we'll, as a group, we will be able to get uh, even more information in the future.